Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today what I want to do is I want to talk about um, Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, and I have completed a complete breakdown of every single chapter of Fandelver and Below, Shattered Obelisk. You can find uh, that playlist in my list of playlists. Enjoy. Um, but this is a general discussion of the Weavers, and this there's going to be spoiler discussion of Fandelver Below and the Shattered Ob Obelisk, but I want to talk about the Weavers. So I finished uh, Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. It's a fantastic, very old school, um, very innovative, it, 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 it has old, old school elements, at the same time, it does something new with Dungeons and & Dragons, and it marries it to body horror. Um, uh, which is really um, unprecedented. I've never seen a uh, Dungeons & Dragons uh, adventure that is as adamant about pushing body horror on the players and on the Dungeon Master, and it's very disturbing, um, and really a new, innovative um, direction and a bold and courageous direction for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, but what's really interesting is there's one page at the very end, right, and it says, hey, you know, in this in this adventure, you saw what just the shards, just the pieces of a shattered obelisk can do and how powerful they can be, right? And in that in Fandelver and Below in the Shattered Obelisk, uh, the Mind Flayers were going to use just the pieces of a shattered obelisk, right? To um, to create a ceremorphous to complete a ceremorphosis ritual and transform everyone in Phandalin into a mind flayer and allow that seed of evil body horror uh, like mutation to spread across all of Faerun, right? And this is only stopped by the actions of the dungeon performers. You have the dungeon master and then you have four dungeon performers around the table sitting in each seat. Right, and if the dungeon performers play their characters well, they can defeat this this um, you know this this terrible fate for Faerun, for the Forgotten Realms. Right, and what I thought was really interesting, Toril, T O R I L, right. What I thought was really interesting is the last page, and the last page says, "Okay, we you've seen the power of these pieces of this shattered obelisk, but what you need to understand is these obelisks that are found." throughout no less than five different books within 5th edition, right? All of these are copies, just copies. You've seen the power. This is the power of just copying an obelisk made by the weavers, right? And the weavers are presented, they're presented textually in the in Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, D&D canon hardback, and they are presented visually, Right, and this is also. I think this is really important to pe for people to understand. Dungeons and Dragons text does not stand alone. It is married to art, right? And one of the one of the greatest innovations of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition is Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition slammed a statement into the ground and said, "Black and white art sucks. It's only allowed in OSR and indie and other inferior products." This is Dungeons and Dragons. It's full color or nothing, right? And Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition was the was actually I think we've been full color since Third Edition. No, 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 no. There was some black and white in uh, in Third Edition. I think we've been full color since Fourth Edition, right? And and Dungeons and Dragons is like no more black and white art. It sucks. It's for it's for noobs. It's for amateurs. It's for rookies. It's for copiers, right? But Dungeons and Dragons is full color, right? And there's this gorgeous visual depiction of um, the Weavers. And when I saw the Weavers, the first thing I thought was, those are grays. Like, those are clearly grays, right? And why were they grays? Because the Dungeons and Dragons design team is hyper-focused on cultural statements. And in 2023, what is one of the biggest conversations we're having in America. Are the greys real? Do they exist? And these conversations are literally going before Congress, right? And so right there, in, in the year where Americans are deeply, deeply, very extremely, um, like, integrally interested in, um, in UFOs and greys, 
Greys are showing up in Dungeons and Dragons. That's astounding. That is absolutely astounding. And if you look at the Weavers, they look just like Greys. But what's even more important is, than that is Dungeons and Dragons is... It, the thing that really astounded me with Phandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, is Dungeons and Dragons is... I think what they're doing is the designers are very carefully planning and they're saying, listen, you don't skip anything. You do not skip a D&D canon hardback. You cannot. Because every single one of them is a footprint in the advancement, a footprint on the path of Dungeons and Dragons march into the future, right? And the Weavers are this incredible statement saying, we have been planning for 10 plus years, at least. And these products go back to, to products that are 20, 30, 40 years old, right? And so this obelisk plan that you are seeing now is the fruition of literally decades of work, right? Minimum one decade, maybe four decades, depending on how you count and depending on how you understand, right? And and it's truly astounding. And they're saying, listen, we've you know we have all these realms, right? How do they tie together? Is there something that was before? Is there something that is an umbrella across all of them? Even though we are an expanding multiverse. Is there something that can tie anything in, right? And that's what the weavers are, right? And it's just one page at the end of the Fandelver book, but it says, if you are serious about Dungeons & Dragons, right? If you want to embrace this as one of the most expansive, most utilitarian intellectual properties in the world, we got you covered. If you want to cut goblins in half and you know, and not understand even the barest, the barest meaning of what's happening here, we'll take your money. We're like, you know, and the, and, and the reality is we need it because we need to serve the, the, the most charismatic, confident, intelligent people, audience in the world, which is Pete, which is Dungeon Masters, right? And it's pretty, it's truly astounding, right? So that's what I think the Weavers represent. That's what I, why I think the Weavers are in Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk. What do you think? Why are the Weavers in Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk? And why do you think um, the Weavers, and what cultural question are the Weavers answering for Americans? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.